This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Aaron, and I'm here to introduce you to Batolio, the app that lets friends and rival fans bet real money with each other instead of the house on sporting events. So I want to start by asking you guys to take the image that likely came to your mind when you heard online gambling. I want you to throw it away. And instead, I want, to picture, want you to picture yourself in a pub. After work, watching football with friends or, or with coworkers, having a few drinks before the match starts. When uh, the guy next to you puts $5 on the table and says, I bet my team scores first. You take the bet right then and there, and the night becomes even more exciting. Now, take that image that I talked about when you first heard online gambling and bring it back. And it probably looks something like this. Does this in any way in your mind represent the online version of the pub experience that we just talked about? Of course not, it's, uh, it's actually nothing like it. It's because these are set up to trap you. For them to win, for you to lose, at bad odds, where the house always wins. That's, that's the line, right? Everybody knows that. So as a sports fan, I got a little bit upset with this, and so I decided to do something about it and built Petolio. The key differentiators for our app is that we started with the platform being extremely simple. Think about what Tinder did for online dating. They made it very natural, very easy, very fun. It was a very bloated experience before. They stripped away all that bloat and made it feel fun and natural again, just like going out and meeting someone at the club like this guy right here. <laughs> Very natural. We made it social. So instead of betting against the house, you're always betting against a real live human being, whether it's someone you know through a social connections or that you invite, or another rival fan that you happen to meet on our, on our platform. Every piece of activity is always done 100% of the time between users, never with our company. And lastly, responsible. I'm not really in the business of ruining people's lives. Uh, I did not want to see people gambling their lives away. So we, this whole platform, even though it's real money, we did it in a socially responsible way, where there are, there are hard caps on activities by the day, the week, the month. That way, you know, I can have a good conscience knowing that people can bet $10 and go home without their wife leaving them. So a picture's worth a thousand words, so I thought I'd give you a video instead. This is what our app is. It gives you featured matches based upon your social media activity. We know what teams you like, so we're going to show you the teams you like. You can quickly create a bet by selecting the team you want, the amount, and even how you want to bet, whether it's a public available or with a friend. You're able to browse through different offers that are put up on the app by other users that you do or do not know. You can quickly review them and accept or ignore them. Now, because we have a timer going, I'm going to skip the rest of the fancy video because it shows you all the features. But if you're interested, I can send out a link. So what's our business model? How does this actually happen? How is this going to get huge? Well, first of all, I have to give the preface because this is the United States, this is illegal. However, it is legal in, in Europe, which is where we've launched and gotten our licenses. But it all starts with our team. I found a Batolio along with my co-partners, Christopher Johansson in Sweden and Michael Weber in Austria. Our backgrounds are in UX, design, creative, front-end, back-end technology, business administration, and project management. It's a lot, but all three of us can do it. We built the, t the, the platform from the ground up on our own, and we're targeting males aged 18 to 24 that live in the European Union and whose social media accounts follow the most popular football teams. We actually reached them through Facebook targeted marketing and had really good results there. We generate revenue by taking just very small percent, at the moment 10, of every completed bet. And as you can imagine, that's a haircut, 10% of a $1 bet, 10% of a $10 bet. But it's still something and helps us operate. We're developing features right now for larger group and tournament bets. Think March Madness that you already do at the office. We've digitized that and we've put it online. You get 100,000 people doing that at 10%, that's some good revenue. So what have we achieved? In 2016, based off an idea, we had ran a crowdfunding campaign. It's a very expensive business to get into. We successfully raised 400,000 euros in 30 days on a, the platform funded by me. It's a very exciting time. We used that money to pay for our legal licenses, to pay for our, all the operational expenses to get started, and we moved into development. In a period of six months, we developed our MVP all in-house 
every line of code. And we launched the app in 2017 summer in Sweden as our test market. Oh, I'm already out of time, wow. Traction, we have 1,000 users uh, with a 5% conversion rate. And just last week we launched in Germany, Austria, Netherlands, and Malta. So what do we need? We need licenses. We're gonna reach as many people as possible before the World Cup starts this summer. We'd like to get the UK, Spain, Italy, and France. Each one of those is about $50,000 per license. Product development, we need to keep working on this. Our team hasn't taken salary in over a year, and we're working on this on our own dollar. We do need to start getting those guys paid. And ultimately, marketing. Those Facebook ads don't pay for themselves. The more people in, the better we run. So thank you guys for listening. That's Batolio. Uh, together, our mission is to change the way that online sports betting is viewed and done. Panelist time. Well, thanks, Aaron. I'm, I'm glad you started. Okay. Okay. Is it on now? Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you started off with differentiators because the first thing I thought was there's probably a lot of companies that are doing online gambling. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the market uh, size in general? Who are the major competitors out there? And then a little bit more on how you're different than what's currently in the market. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th that's always the question. Why hasn't this been done before? Has it been done before? The fact is, it hasn't. There's plenty of people who've tried and come up against the roadblock of people betting people for small amounts, no house, no odds, you do it all yourself, and they can never get past the cost to enter the market. Uh, we were able to do that. So the big differentiator is any startup out there right now in the gambling industry in Europe is either for uh, points, digital points, virtual currencies, and now they're starting to get into the uh, cryptocurrency. But we really felt those small, real monetary amounts are what kind of enhances that experience of, of betting with people you know on sporting events. Um, there are some startups out there that are getting into more of uh, the, the kind of daily fantasy sports for real money. But again, it's not my team beats your team. So we are, at the moment, the only one that offers a person-to-person -person or person-to-group that you can invite real money betting. Um, some competitors allow you to pick a pool of matches, you know, pick them, who's going to win, who's going to lose, and then you kind of see how you've done against everyone else. But it's never, too, never changing hands between users. So Aaron, Aaron, nice pitch. Uh, I think you did a good job. I have a list of like eight things I look for. You hit seven of the eight. The only one that you missed was the uh, market size that uh, Alan talked about. So really nice job. Like how you painted a picture in the beginning. Um, I love the video. Uh, I, the, the video was nice and you, you talked us through it. It really showed us exactly how the app worked. Um, so nice job there. Uh, I guess one of my questions is why just uh, the EU? Um, it seems like you're really segmenting that market. And are all of you based in the US uh, with an app that is targeted for European users? Okay, so first question was uh, target market, right? And I, did, I didn't know if I addressed that incorrectly. The, the football betting, online betting market is a seven billion dollar, a trillion dollar industry every year. So we're taking 10% of that to set what our market cap is, just 10%. We're not looking for hardcore gamblers, we're looking for regular sports fans. Uh, secondly, why Europe? It was originally intended for NFL. Uh, I'm a coach and I coach football for kids and I love it and I'm always thinking about it and I loved uh, betting with my friends. That's where the idea came from. However, in the United States, it's not legal. Uh, it is legal in South America and now Africa and Australia, but we had to start somewhere, so we picked where the most uh, soccer fans were, which is the EU. Um, I'm based here in Charlotte and my founders are, are in Europe. Uh, we're okay. his first team, and we registered the company for legal reasons with the license in Malta, and are currently looking to move operations either to London or Vienna. Great. Um, so last thing before I pass it over to Daniel. Um, so my first concern when I got the, uh, the list of pitchers last night was it's a really crowded space, and how do you differentiate yourself? And of course you addressed that in the beginning, but this is going to be a digital marketing play. How do people find you? Um, because I just did a quick Google search this morning, and there are a lot of EU-focused apps, uh, quite honestly, out there. So I think that's, that's going to be one of your biggest challenges, is how do you, how do you find users? Um, so you mentioned that you have 1,000 unique users now. Um, what, is the, what is the revenue on that? Okay, so I'll, I'll address the first question first. Yeah. Uh, finding users, we do use Facebook marketing over the last six months, and have really gotten our targeting down very nicely. We show Facebook ads 
that show cartoon hands holding phones with different soccer logos on them and interconnecting dots. And it says, bet your friends, forget the house. Install now, it's free. Uh, so right now, those ads are running about $2 per install, mm -hmm. which is resulting in that 5% conversion rate, which is, that's only in Sweden, which is a market of, I don't know, 3 million people, something very small. So we've gotten some really good returns on that. Um, second question. You, you said you had 1,000 users. Oh, how, 1, yeah, users. how have you, have you converted that to revenue and how much? So each user right now, our lifetime over seven months of operation, the LTV is around 10 euros per, per sign up. And our active users are worth um, 850 per month. Okay. Okay. Um, a great job on the presentation. Uh, so, what I really liked was the summary up front, so it did get us focused, right? And usually that's lacking, so thank you for doing that. Um, I really liked the video, and I also liked the fact that you didn't linger on the video, right? You showed that it was real, that you actually had a pretty interesting UI, and that was good, but you didn't spend too much time with it, so that, I liked it. A um, couple of questions that, that um, I, I had the same questions around competition and market. I, I'm actually originally from the UK, so uh, what probably a lot of people in the audience don't understand is how big sports betting is there, right? It's, it's got a long history. Store. It's been legal for a long time, and it's much bigger than anything that you can, you could, you've ever seen in the U.S. market. You, you know, I mean, it's kind of like Vegas everywhere, right? Um, so you probably want to spend a little time, if you're talking to a U.S. audience, educating them on that and the size of market. If I heard you correctly, you said it just the football, and although we know it as soccer, um, betting market in the in Europe alone is a trillion dollars. Is that was that correct? Seven trillion per year. Seven trillion. Okay. Um, yeah. So huge market, right? Um, the the one thing that I was missing as you t talked about doing this was customer acquisition costs, right? So you talked about um, how many euros per month you were actually making with that thousand user base that you have, but what does it cost you to actually acquire a customer? Okay, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I just came back from London last week and I got that question a lot. Uh, yeah. In the industry right now, the seven trillion dollar industry, the average customer acquisition cost is over 400 pounds per player. Uh, that's because they hand out these crazy bonuses and try to ensnare these people to play more. Um, we don't have that. So over the lifetime, we've spent $10,000 in advertising uh, over the seven months. Uh, and I think it, what, it, what it equates down to is about $35 per player for, for um, acquisition cost. Um, and that's for, actually for an active user. Um, and, and, that, and that $35 acquisition cost, you said your lifetime value that you've estimated so far from the existing customer base, what do you expect that to be? So lifetime value right now, and that's even for the churn users, is 10. Uh, and then interesting enough, when we look at our actual active users, which hovers around six or, six or 700 people per month, those users are generating about 850 per month in revenue. Um, and then one, you know, I, I know that you're, you're going country by country doing the licensing thing. Uh, again, the analogy in the U.S. would be doing state by state licensing. Um, and I've, I've actually been down that path before. It's pretty painful in, in the payment space because uh, payment companies have to get licensed in every state. Um, what about GDPR? Is that going to impact uh, that process for you? Uh, definitely. So uh, people aren't familiar with Europe. We did get our license in Malta. The EU is kind of like the federal, so we got our license there, and in theory allows us to operate throughout the entire European Union. In theory is only theory. In actuality, we can operate in countries like Malta, Sweden, Austria, Germany, Netherlands, Luxembourg, but some of the bigger countries, they have their own licenses. So we got that base license that allows us to operate in the majority of countries as our test market before we really go spend that real large amounts to get in some of the bigger ones. Uh, as far as gross domestic product goes, uh, we are ignoring countries like Slovakia, Estonia, Finland, who don't really have the population or the expendable income to go out and spend that kind of money. Um, they will come eventually, but just not priority. Uh, Aaron, a follow-up question. Uh, do you have any intellectual property or secret sauce that you can use to kind of keep somebody else from mimicking what you're building? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. We, we, we take a very good, a very deep look into social media profiles when people sign up uh, to help connect them with the people that they know and the teams that they like. So rather than just blindly throwing them down here, here's what's available to you, uh, we really pull in teams that they've commented on, clubs that they follow, 
clubs that their friends follow, and we pull it all together to give them an experience that from the moment they sign in feels tailored to them. Plus the, uh, the gambling companies aren't interested because they want to make this much. They don't want a haircut. Uh, so Aaron, are you currently fundraising? And if so, what's, what's the ask in deal terms? So we, we are currently fundraising. Um, we took that uh, original crowdfunding amount. It was supposed to last one year. We stretched it into two. Our runway, uh, five months of runway left to where we're you know, closed down the shop, uh, which coincides with when the World Cup comes. So hence the fundraising. We really want to hit that target. Uh, our minimum amount needed, and we're just an open and upfront about this, is we need about 50,000 euros to renew our license for 12 months. Uh, that price has actually increased from 8,000 to 25,000 overnight this year. Uh, our maximum ask for expansion goals and everything is 1 million euros, and that comes off the valuation that we had at crowdfunding, and that'll be used to get into those bigger countries, expand our team, and be able to uh, market it significantly.